Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 415, uh, uh, featuring an interview slash gameplay video with Marco Pedrana of 2-Bits Kid. Uh, we'll be looking at his game, Eon of Sands. Uh, this is a classic uh, style CRPG. Uh, it's set in a post-apocalyptic universe. And if you like games like uh, the classic uh, Might and Magic series, if you like the Lands of Lore games, uh, if you like that post-apocalyptic uh, Fallout <laughs> slash Wasteland setting, I think you'll really enjoy this game. Uh, but it's more than just uh, you know a mashup of those games. It's really got a personality of its own and a really nice uh, art direction. Anyway, I haven't ever uh, quite played anything like this before, uh, so I wanted to uh, share it with you and get the thoughts of the developer as well. Anyway, there's a lot here, so without further ado, here is Marco Pedrana. All right, folks, I am here with Marco Pedrana of 2-Bits Kid Hello. to talk about his game Aeon of Sands, uh, The Trail. So how are you doing today, Marco? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, as I, I'm, uh, I'm working on something new about for, for uh, the game, and uh, I can tell it about it. I cannot tell about it yet, but I'm very fine. What about you? <laughs> doing good. Uh, so where are you from, Marco? Uh, I'm uh, from Italy, a uh, small town in the north part of Italy, and uh, I think that uh, uh, our team, the uh, Tubit Kid, is uh, often credited as being German, but that's only half, the, half of the truth. Yeah, Italy. One of my books got translated into Italian. I don't know if you ever seen really? that. Saw that one, uh, Vintage Games 1.0. Uh, there's a second edition now. I don't think anybody's undertaken that translation, but <laughs> I always imagine that it's, it's pretty cool that there's such a, you know, a big audience in, in Italy that would be interested in vintage games. But uh, it seems like there's a bit of a retro games culture there, right? Uh, yes, there there is. I, I actually I have just found that, that I'm living close to the most, to the biggest uh, uh, vintage computer museum in uh, probably half of Europe. Or something like that and yes there is a there is a big uh, there is a big uh, retro um, scene and uh, only be only because of the of the geography of Italy it's um, difficult to to meet in in person but you know yes, I know how that is uh, well tell me about this a uh, little bit about Aeon of sands okay. of the trail. I mean, I know it's, you said it's kind of a mix of a choose your own adventure or those game books, uh, a little bit of uh, adventure game elements. I mean, how, how do you describe it? Uh, I, I tend to describe it uh, when I don't speak with the press as an adventure, but uh, uh, because that's the part that I that I care about the most. But uh, uh, at the core is probably, uh, as you said. Uh, a mix up with uh, like a mix up of uh, of again like I've been older and uh, and uh, choose your own adventure kind of book. It's the story of a of a, a good for nothing uh, a small guy who is thrown out of his um, cozy home in the in this uh, uh, huge tree that you see here on the on the menu of the game. Uh, um, which is uh, one of the few points of civilization in the, remaining in the world in this post-apocalyptic uh, uh, world. And uh, he has to go on about uh, a mission that he doesn't care about, but uh, he cannot uh, go back until uh, to his home until uh, he is done. It is just like a kind of a Donald Duck uh, uh, kind of guy thrown into a Fallout universe. It kind of reminds me a little bit of that book, uh, Canticle of Leibowitz. Some, yeah, yes, this this is very interesting. Somebody pointed to me it uh, this week. Uh, uh, probably I heard of it uh, 
but I never got to read it. It's very, uh, it looked like a very interesting game, uh, book, sorry. I, guess what, I think it's kind of an under, you don't really hear enough about it, but it's, it's if you like the post-apocalyptic uh, Mad Max type stories, yeah. I think it's, you should definitely check it out. But anyway, let's get into Aeon of the Sands here. So. Yeah, 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 go. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, I've got a game going here, but uh, we'll start the new game, take a look at that. Uh, okay. So like, oh, he's, he's nice and relaxed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Do I want uh, easy, normal, or hard? How, what does this actually affect? Uh, that affects only the, the, the speed and uh, some st other statistic of the monster that you encounter. There are no uh, differences in, uh, in uh, uh, experience or whatever or uh, loot, uh, uh, if you care about those kind of things, uh, for uh, for the experience of the game. This is occasionally, that's fine. I don't think people want to watch a whole video with a Frozen. Okay. Okay, so it sounds like I should probably just go with this normal mode then, right? Yes, I will suggest that. All right, let's get into this. <laughs> this is a nice, uh, uh, nice art direction here. Thank you. Not quite sure what that reminds me of. It's looks a little bit maybe like that old uh, Mullen Ranger cartoon. Mm, yeah, I, I I went for for a very very rough, yeah. raw style from the get going. Was that guy Bakshi? Did the uh, sorry? I'm trying to think of the name name of that animator that did the old Hobbit cartoon movie. I think that's him, right? No, wizards. Okay, so in the end, you are here. There's a floor that's covered in sand, a ceiling that's orange, like, and a salad bowl turned upside down, which is also very large. Okay, so we got a a very 90s looking interface here, which I approve of. Uh, we've got a picture of the dome here, a little animation. Looks kind of like one of those, uh, almost like one of those little globes that you could buy with the uh, topiary inside um, but this is sorry. a dump. sorry sorry I, I don't want to interrupt you but uh, uh, as you as you mentioned the interface uh, uh, if you like to uh, um, resize the center the, the the interactive part of the of the of the game before you go in, you go forward you can in the menu that, that's only oh what is this I can change me. up the what now the 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 part where where the the illustration the 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 action is you can uh, actually uh, size it up to the to the to your screen resolution to your monitor res resolution. Oh well, maybe we should, you think we should do that. I have to go back to the main menu. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't think about it before, but yeah, it's okay. So that's under options. Yes, video. Video. And uh, uh, stretch. Whoa, there we go. Okay. Now let's do it again. Although I kind of like that border. It was kind of bringing back nostalgia for me. <laughs> <laughs> Board for, for all the time, it's, it's okay with me. Okay, well, this is a good. A good compromise. This stuff got the, the nice frame. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Uh, I've got the floor that's covered in sand, ceiling that's orange like a salad bowl turned upside down. What's that? Give me some poetry. <laughs> I paid big money for this game. Uh, yeah, don't waste time on words, illiteracy, <laughs> or death. <laughs> I know everything already. Just start this thing. Yeah, so this is a, something I was noticing, Marco, with this. It's it's almost it's a kind of a meta game. I mean, it seems like it's you're kind of commenting here a lot about other games of this type. It seems very yes. sort of self-aware. Uh, I actually yes, this it's... first one I, I <laughs> this, this is one of my criticisms. I, I'm not going to name any specific games, but there are a couple that came out fairly recently, and it just seems like you're reading this book of poetry when you just want to get to the to the game. I know some people like like that stuff the best. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm probably going to go for <laughs> not about number two. <laughs> oh, what the heck. Yeah, who'd want to know about all that crap about the story anyway? 
all those turns and twists on which a third rate rider poured over for the better part of a year. <laughs> they are making me feel guilty about about it. I, I'll skip all the dialogues, laughing cruelly at him. <laughs> this is, this is weird with you right here, Marco. I'd feel a little self conscious. Of... Okay, just give me the gist. Don't go ahead. Because uh, you worked hard on this dialogue, right, Marco? And... I should warn you that uh, there are no really bad uh, choices here. I mean, somehow uh, the, the narrator gives you the, the option to skip uh, for a bit because maybe you are not interested in all the, all the, all the writer, the third right, rated writer rants. <laughs> but that's okay. Just go for what you like. Your game experience will be different, but you'll be able to complete the game in either case. Okay, the point is, you play the Kirk Citrani, and you should keep him alive. The game is not over until he dies, as this is his story. The story may go here and there. Let's let you access some dungeons. Let you access some dungeons or others, depending on the paths you take. All right, so you could miss whole dungeons in this game. Uh, Sorry? So if you don't, depending on your choices, you might miss some dungeons, right? Yes. Uh, at some point, you, you have, uh, for instance, a choice between probably uh, eight, nine different dungeons. And uh, it occurs in a minor capacity throughout all the game. That's a... So you can never see, it, uh, see all of it in a single playthrough. Good. Re replay value. Give you items or companions... And take them from you, but even choosing randomly without reading the dialogues will give you the crawling <laughs> you crave. <laughs> yeah, that's me. And you would still be able to reach any game's ending. All right, that's good. Oh, now this is kind of reminding me a little of uh, Riven. Wow, nice. Uh, it's a trying to guard in a small pile of money uh, that you'll eventually use to buy stuff later at the marketplace. Reach the entrance to the underground of their city to get some crap needed oh. to exit the town and go search for a lost caravan. No, to you, I see that you are playing with uh, with a uh, obsolete uh, uh, version of the game. We have <laughs> no. already released patches for that. Oh, uh, well, how different is it? Sorry? Oh, wait, because I'm kind of excited here because I see the word rats. Finally, rats and loot. <laughs> here I come. <laughs> Do uh, you think I should... Should I stop here and download the latest one, or is this good? Uh, you will not experience any crashes here, but uh, uh, if you want the, the best... Uh, I mean, uh, we have fixed a lot, a lot of typos, for instance, between those two versions, but uh, whatever you want. Ah, we want. If you see some typos, just assume they'll be fixed, folks. Okay. <laughs> That's what I get to that. Uh, these rats. There's rats somewhere that need a... Uh, to be whacked that's what's important keep that in mind yes. let's see this is the tutorial of the game you can move through its pages by clicking on the arrows at the bottom right you can exit it at any time by clicking on the cross button at the top left and hit escape can be pressed to skip a tutorial oh nice ah, so do a good job here showing you the breakdown forward backward I don't think we have to use the, the mouse though right yeah we click on yeah, it's, I mean, we, we showed it for everybody, but... Yeah, there we go. You can use the W, S, yeah. Q, E, A, D, okay. Move you can forward. also remap them. Oh, nice. Alternatively, because, yeah, some people do like to use the arrow keys. So you kind of thought about everybody here. That's good. Now, is this like a Dungeon Master? I mean, are the monsters just going to be roaming around? Or is it all just based on every movement? Uh, there are areas for them. They uh, uh, roam around in their in their uh, scripted paths until they f see you, and then uh, they follow you up. All right, so this is looking good. Reminds me of a uh, dungeon master. Uh, this is Citrani, your main character. You can click with the left mouse button on his portrait to access his inventory. <clears throat> All right, so we got up three characters. Uh, you have more than one character. Click and hold any portrait with the right mouse button. Drag it over <laughs> another portrait. All the characters walk on a line. Oh, okay. 
So it's not like in Dungeon Master where they're kind of spread out. Yeah. Uh, this I mean, makes more I, sense. We had to, to base them somehow in in the, in, the, in the map, you know. Uh, that's why that that the reason for that is is that uh, Cetran is your main is your most important care important character. So you want to keep it safe. So I gave you, we gave uh, we gave you uh, the the option to um, uh, keep it safe from the most of the, the damage. So you can drag it around, and that for that we need uh, to add uh, to have a, a, a line. Let's see, so at zero hit points, character dies. There is an exception, however. When that character is Citrani, he has at least one companion, then he only falls unconscious. If he's the only character in the party, he then he dies. <laughs> so we could use uh, our other companions as shields. Indicates the possibility of your character to perform actions. The desert is full of magic energy called mana. This resource is enabled by consuming a reagent of one of the mana classes, air, water, magma. The character casts a spell, his mana intoxication. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> so when you cast yeah. spells, you get drunk? Yeah, uh, not drunk, but uh, uh, poisoned. Oh, jeez. And uh, 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 it's not poison that, uh, that damages you outright, but uh, uh, if you reach the, the top of the bar there, uh, you, and you, can, you get damage uh, for every new spell that you cast until it, go, it goes down. Oh, so it does eventually go back down. Yeah. Very slow. Character's right hand, it holds melee and ranged weapons only. It can hold shields and ammo. This is all getting me excited, man. I'm <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe, you want to, maybe you want to get in, uh, uh, right into the play. And, uh, no, and, no, uh, I like to know. I, I don't mind a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is important information here. Uh, grab items from the floor, drag them on the character's hands. So there's going to be uh, pressure plates and things. Yep. Uh, the item will go into the backpack. If, if you drag and drop them on the character portrait, the items will go to the character's backpack. Okay. Press 1 on your keyboard or click the right mouse button on the right hand slot to attack in return. You can attack or use an item in the character's left hand by pressing 2 on the keyboard. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Makes a lot of sense. So, welcome to the Aeon of Sands, the under the under roots. I knew yes. I should have remained in bed this morning. I was looking at this. Uh, this is a pretty nice auto mapper. I noticed this on my yeah, last playthrough. Yeah, more tutorial uh, <laughs> stopping you from, from using it. No, sorry. Uh, I remember back when games, you'd have to sit down and read like a beefy. Yeah, two, three hundred page manual sometimes to <laughs> make headway. <laughs> uh, this area shows the. Wow, what is that? Indis Indicia? A legend. I I'm not sure of the English word. I used the. the <laughs> I, I thought that it was uh, international. Shows the Indicia. That's already corrected. Uh, in order to flag important things. Well, it's okay. I have a little bit of Italian flavor here. That's it. <laughs> Learn some new vocab. Where to flag important things. Also, we can draw on the map, too. Yes. There it shows you all the guide marks you can use to make your notes. Select an icon. <coughs> Select a pencil icon. Eraser icon. Wow, you thought of everything here. I exit the large map by clicking with the right mouse button. I have to give the credit to my to my colleague for, for all of this because uh, he's the one who figure out all the interaction possible with the with the, um, for for the for the user interface and the player to check anybody that likes this the old school dungeon crawlers is going to have to get excited about this just looking at this part alone it yeah. kind of harkens back to the old graph paper you know days and i'm just going to try out this old. try out this pencil here okay whoa <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Okay, now it's just a matter of... Alright, so there's our inventory. So we have a party inventory as well as his own personal inventory. Yes. Drag and drop items, tool tips, consumable items. Are we have, do we have to eat and drink? No, you don't, but uh, when, you, when you do, <coughs> you recover some... Uh, 
health or stamina or uh, if you if if that's reagent you you lower your mana intoxication to close the inventory panel all right uh, what am i looking at there is that a, anything you can uh, route or right mouse button on oh. most of uh oh, that's a bunk the word i mean most of the world is tell you something much of a bunk uh, the wall here should have something to open that door. Now, what was it? Oh, first puzzle. You gonna stump me on the first puzzle? <laughs> <laughs> something to open the door. So there must be a button around. Oh, this is a partly hidden route. A lever to pull open the door. Yeah, this is gonna be good. I can tell already. Okay. Yank on that. You should also notice that uh, that when you when your mouse uh, pointer goes on a, a surface that you can click like uh, like that, it turn it changes to a, a finger to a hand and a finger. <coughs> I'm guessing I probably want to leave that open. <laughs> what is that? A torn curtain. Oh, I think I see a weapon over there. A niche in the wall. A tiny dagger. Get that dagger. Okay. And I'm armed! <laughs> Bring on the rats. So I need to put something in this niche? No, it's just decoration. Whoa. But maybe I should not tell you that. What does I mean, that do? I should, I should do it. <laughs> Stay silent. <laughs> Look, it's throwing something, man. Uh, I can't see. Oh, you game designers and your mysteries. Yeah. Okay. Don't... But uh, sorry, I, I don't hear uh, the audio of the word here, maybe because of the setting of Skype yeah. or whatever. And uh, I just uh, um, I cannot I cannot uh, I cannot uh, uh, give you feedback because I don't hear what happens. That that's only what I meant. Well, can you see it? Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Let's see, what is this? You see a dead body. See, that's what happens when the public works department is held by incompetent buffoons. <laughs> a little bit of a social political commentary there, Marco. Oh. Okay. No, I'm friendly with everybody in the, in the bureaucracy. <laughs> but I cannot oh. speak for Citroën. Oh, what is this? Water skin. Yeah, there's that water skin. <clears throat> you said I could use that to replenish my, my health, right? Yes. Oh, crap. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, if you go into into your inventory, into your backpack, sorry, you see, and, and yeah, exactly, and you over uh, on every item with your mouse pointer, you see what they do. Oh, lots of information. Oh, I guess I can't get a collapsed tunnel. Only useless historical records were in that wing, I recall. Okay. Man, I'm the type of guy that needs this auto map. <laughs> I know there's it's some. There for that reason, no worries. There's some more useless tunnels. Let's get. What is this? Note to self, when in doubt, flee. Uh, does that mean? Does that mean what I think it means? Probably does. Come on, I can almost smell a rat in here. <laughs> no, he's got to be. Where is he? Huh. Uh, the underroots, among other things, the place where the destitute live. Uh, the people that the city failed squat here. Also some old rovers. The ones that survived the desert at any rate. Yeah, so there must there's some people. Yeah, there's the people, right? <clears throat> oh, this is the lowest rent one can get, I guess. <laughs> Disenfranchised of Pantella. A reminder not to piss off the brown leaves. Huh. Nice ambiance. Uh, what is the sweet fruit? 
Nice of them to leave some sweet fruit there for me. Mm. I keep feeling like I need to put something in these niches. Mm. What is that? Recovers lost hit points and stamina gives... So this one thing will make me dizzy. Okay. No, not none of them. It's just a, it's just a narration. Oh. They don't break your character. Okay. Gotta be. Seems like a pretty good sized dungeon too. Uh, yes, I'm. Uh, I'm Better. a person to 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 rant against uh, about the sizes of uh, the, the the dungeons in the game. Is this shirt worse than what I got? Double metal click. Minus two, minus one. I can't tell if this is, I guess I should wear yeah, that, right? It's a, yes, it's a bit better. Very, very tiny bit better. <laughs> See, I like a game that, I think it's it's good when a role playing game just slowly lets you accumulate stuff, right? I, I'm not a fan of the games that just make you super powerful right off the bat. I mean, that's the whole point for me is gradually building up. I admit it, I live in a life of privilege. Well, until now. Well, one of the the core concept in the in the game from uh, early on was that uh, uh, I didn't want to have a, a, a big uh, um, ramp of uh, of experience uh, of uh, of uh, power or something like that because it, it seemed to me like. Uh, uh, much fantasy or something like that, and uh, I th we thought me and Florian that uh, would be would have been reasonable that uh, if a character with no experience going through this uh, grinder maybe it would become better by maybe twice it was at the start or something like this. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Did I get him? Startled me. Oh, there is. He's back. Oh, oh what a. Oh look, a very large, hostile, juicy rat! Your first enemy. That's as it should be. That's a good sized rat too. So you can fight with your character's bare hands by clicking on the right on the hand slots. Okay, but I shouldn't have to do that. <clears throat> you better use a weapon. If you have one in your backpack, open it and drag and drop the weapon. One step ahead of you there. <laughs> cool down, see if the opponent is only when part of combat, you have to try not to get your characters to be hit. To do so, you can time your blows to break the preparation of the opponent's attacks. Oh, my goodness. This is a little complicated. Or you can simply have your characters dodge. Okay, so a little bit of the old Grimrock Shuffle, as I like to call it. Yes. Oh, we can strafe out of this guy's range. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. oh, got him. Got him. My first rat. Dead. Oh, there's another one. Two. Yeah, so we can just sort of strafe out of these guys' range. Yep, and yet another one. <laughs> oh, oh, crap. What happened? <laughs> oh come on, come come back! Oh, where'd he go? <laughs> ah, three rats down, man. And it didn't take too long. I don't think I've been playing for that long, and I'm already killing rats. That's that's a good thing. I heard in the common room that a citizen went crazy and almost killed somebody. Never caught. The underroots are vast. I really hope not to stumble into them. Uh, so there must be a way through there somewhere. Z slowly, switches are getting farther oh, yeah. from uh, from the thing to trigger. I think this pipe is a little takes a, it's gotten longer cooldown, I guess, than the dagger. Uh, Can, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. I was wondering if I could close the door on the rat. Would that kill him? Oh, what happened to my pipe? Uh, party inventory. Da, 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 da. Get that. No, 
alive. Uh, oh. <laughs> I think I had to cut through that. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. It's my, it's my fault. Oh, there we go again. Oh, now I've only got this little crummy dagger, though. I really want to attack these guys with my pipe. So I guess the weapons degrade over time. No, not not all of them. Um, only the rusty ones. Oh, rusty pipe. At least I can give them tetanus while I'm whacking them. Remember, you click with your right mouse button. Okay, their skeleton is more dead than most of them. A little flavor text there. Oh, I see something over there. What is that? You see a hole in the ceiling. Does that mean I can go up? How does this work? Is that an elevator? No, it is not. But maybe it's an elevator on the on the other way. I mean, if you are up. Oh, I see. So I should probably make a note of that. Use my pencil. <laughs> Hole in the ceiling. Yeah. That's the scholarly way to play. Oh, he's back. Oh, he's got me boxed in now. I probably shouldn't have. Oh, he's not too bad. Man, what is that? Five rats so far? Yeah. I know that we will uh, raise the difficulty of the of the the game in a in the next patch. Ooh, because what is that? You see a platform. Now, if I didn't know better, I'd say that's a pressure plate. Do I have anything to put on it? Eh, I don't want to waste my... Is that like a rock or something? <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean about the sounds. Some of the clues, you can hear the stuff opening, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if the, the sound will come through on the... Re the video or not? No, it doesn't. I, I only hear your typing furiously on uh, on the keyboard. Well, that's but it's okay because I mean I got this clickety clack of the keyboard. Uh, no, no, don't worry. It's it's just that I meant. Uh, now I basically know the game by memory. So. <laughs> oh, I think I see a little something here. I hear something though, like a like a. That's very really good. Something moving around. There he is. There I am here. Oh, oh! I got too excited. You gotta. <laughs> so they can double up on the same tile. Yep. Oh man, this is. I don't want to die. There we go. Well, it looks like my health is coming back. Or is that stamina? That's stamina, right? The red oh. one is stamina. Yes. Okay. Well, there must be something good in that room. I mean, what's not to like here? You got a sort of a creepy post-apocalyptic setting. You got plenty of rats to kill. All kinds of puzzles in here. A little secret. Oh, what's this? Crates, boxes, a jars. Been... Rusty shank. <laughs> yeah, you don't exactly spoil me with the uh, awesome stuff. Nah, you would have to, to go a lot of miles before you get something nice. You know, after Maybe. several weeks of gameplay, you might get a slightly less rusty shank. <laughs> At least you're not giving me uh, candy cane shivs. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, this is... Uh, I'm pretty impressed already... What's this? Red mushroom. Mo! Oh! Try to sneak up on me. Come up on me when I'm scoping out the shrooms. What does this thing do? Mana class, elemental water. Cleanses cleanses some water mana, but it's not exactly healthy. Ah, so you can 
sort of a poison and a cure. Yep. There's another one of those. So how long does it take to make something like this? This game, Sorry. Marco. Did it take a long time to make this? Oh, yeah, seven years. Seven years? Yeah. And how big is your team? It's, you said you had an artist, right? And a, a coder? Uh, we are a two person uh, team at the core a coder and, uh, and me doing the graphics and uh, audio editing. We both uh, t we t do the game design together. Then we had uh, help uh, by. Um, Oh, okay, let me let me do it. Let me throw some names there for um, uh, on, on the people's faces. Uh, so there's me, Marco Pedrana. There is uh, Florian Fisher, who, who is the cutter. Uh, we have uh, f uh, we had help f for the music uh, by um, from uh, from uh, Gabriel Artuso, which is a local musician. It's good music and too. Then, uh, thank you. And then uh, uh, two friends uh, who helped us uh, with uh, the uh, with some spell animations uh, uh, to pix artists, uh, Richard Schmidt Bauer and uh, uh, Stefan Kaule, who are uh, Germans. And I somehow circled back. Look at the size of this. I guess this is going to go. Is it just going to fill up no. the whole screen eventually? No, 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 not not at all. I mean, I tried to uh, I tried <clears> to <throat> give an organic look to some of the mazes, so not always the the square of the of the um, map area will be mm -hmm. filled up. But it was a lot of fun designing these dungeons. Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> What's up with these snakes? Designing is always designing is always fun. It's testing the table toll. What's up with this guy? Oh my! What a cool, surely, <laughs> surely friendly snake. <laughs> you know, I'm just not quite buying that. I don't think I. <laughs> yeah, I might end up like this guy, man. This is almost. I mean, what happened here? You get crushed. Yeah, it's uh, the concept here is that uh, all of this area has been created by the roots of this gigantic tree up uh, up above the ground. Oh. So maybe they have encompassed the encompassed the the people who died there during the ages. I I don't know. That's a little creepy. Oh, wait, have I been here already? <laughs> You're probably just dying. <laughs> like, oh god, go this way, Matt. You've already been that way, Matt. Go on. You are going very well. Uh, I mean, I'll you tell have you, I got severe erectile yep. dysfunction. That's why I need the. Whoa! Holy cow! What the? What is this? This is my first dude battle. Oh! Dead telling cutthroat. Oh no! Let's <laughs> throw a rock at you. you. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Hurry! Oh, he's still up. Oh man! Is this it? Go on. I can't back up. Oh no! Well, maybe you are very lucky. Ah! I'm sorry. <laughs> you died. Well, you know it's it's good. It's okay to die. It's just our first playthrough, right? We need to go back. Only two kinds of creatures get fun. Get fun in the desert, Bedouins and gods, <laughs> and you're neither. <laughs> Lawrence of Arabia. Well, thank you for the pithy quotation. That makes me feel <laughs> a lot better. Okay, well, let me uh, pause it here, and then you said you had a uh, a later save game I could check out and look at yes. some of the later game. Let's try that. Okay. Okay, so about how much later is this in the game? This is uh, the first one, that the one that you choose is not very far uh, after that, you have just uh, exited the three levels of the tutorial uh, uh, dungeon, and uh, you went probably through. Uh, um, um, actually, I know that you let your uh, uh, companion guard to do shopping for you at the marketplace, and there you exit uh, the city with some uh, some 
stuff, some loot from uh, the dungeons and uh, some uh, uh, things bought in the marketplace. And now you are on the war, war, the, uh, war map. This looks really cool. So I'm here? Yes, that's your cursor. You move uh, around oh, cool. the roads. It's like a tabletop miniatures game. Misplaced breeze, natural some fresher region of the desert, perhaps. If such regions would actually exist, <laughs> guns forth from the settlement in view. Still half a mile away, there is no activity between the tents that are only slowly roused by the wind, nor in the animal pen, which seems to be empty. I don't know if I like the sound of that. <laughs> seems to be empty, huh? Uh, let's check it nevertheless. I feel lucky. Yeah, because we've been really lucky so far. Time short and the place doesn't look safe. Let's skip it. Oh come on, you yeah. <clears throat> you gotta do the first one. Come on, we brave. A glitter on the ground, white hot under the sun, comes in painful waves to the eyes. The camp gets closer. A dozen of tattered shelters bent over and torn, like deflated pods with their bellies cut and their innards in the dirt, hastily <laughs> shiver in the breeze. <laughs> Not exactly vacation material. Oh. I don't know. Uh, there's nothing to be seen, neither alive nor dead. Strani follows the metallic net of the animal pen for a while. He's not sure, but it seems like someone or something lies there in a bundle. Uh, let's check out. Let's check what it is. Hey, guard. What do you know of camps like this? So I got a guard as my companion now. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I I didn't give you the time to check on the war map, war map but uh, there, you can access the party inventory from there too, and uh, you could have seen uh, that he has joined your party. It seems like it'd be a good idea to ask him, right? You should know. Uh, distaste deforms Harrow's mouth. However, it's not clear of who or what. Looks like a raider's camp. Nomads don't need no pen. That large for animals, <laughs> since they mostly sleep with them. Ugh. Uh, no, that's for men. That's to why this large, I don't know, maybe an exchange station, filthy bastards. Yeah, this place is not seeming like such a great place to hang out. <laughs> uh, the hatred in the guard's last remark is not lost to the clerk. Raids are, after all, a plague on the desert domes. For a second there, Citrani imagines himself as a captive. Uh, robbed of his tree, of his place in his society, and reduced to even less than an animal to scrounge. Nourishment and distant radioactive wastes gets back to reality with a shudder. There's just some good storytelling here. I like the, 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 you know, sort of giving us some insights into what the character's thinking. Thank you. Uh, let's go away. We still need to check it. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. We've got Mummy Man. Uh, crazy eyes look at Sajani from under a piece of cloth ripped from a tent. Then they wander aimlessly to the rhythm of the owner's slow wailing. Now, he doesn't look like he's going to put up much of a fight. A uh, figure is unmistakably human. A young man with a shelter made of ruined cloth. His naked skin exposed to the elements. Uh, yeah, I don't think. Maybe he's, uh, maybe we shouldn't try to kill him. Maybe he's, uh, maybe we should try to help him. Let's see, drag him out. Drag him out of the suns. Offer him some water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just spray him down. Hose him down. Uh, two hesitant hands meet the offered water skin. Then snatch it. Uh, once he's drunk, he's filled. The, the man boy uh, pours the remaining water on, on the sand around, madly laughing. While Citrani tries to take back the water skin. Are you crazy? Why are you doing that? <laughs> yeah, crazy. That's definitely crazy. <laughs> uh, the man boy fixes his gaze on the clerks. The desert. The desert ate, and now must drink its share. Oh, boy. You know, I'm thinking the sun has fried this guy's brain. <laughs> just possibly Just so. thinking that. Let's see. Uh, should probably get out of here, but we'll see where this goes. We're committed now. Uh, the man boy sniggers. You are thick. Thick like a tick. Thick like a tick. I liked ticks. I had them at home. He opens his arms wise, wide as to show his tick's alleged size. But you are thick. Zuni must not get them mixed up. 
<laughs> Sunni32, that's me, and you are thick, and they are dead. Desert has eaten the raiders, yeah. This is getting more Mad Max by the uh, by the minute. See, I don't understand what raiders. What kind of a name? <laughs> well, as it happens, I don't care. <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. Nice close up there. Uh, raiders, dead raiders, very dead. You want more for your water? Uh, then here, they don't matter anymore. But I cannot go back, get back to home. Zuni doesn't know the way. Everybody dead there. Not everybody, but a live one are strangers. Uh, the strange man boy looks at the clerk for a second. Then raiders fell in a rip. Desert digests them. I will say no more about them, but Zuni still need to get away from this open. Well, the ugly man, let me follow him. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> call him, who you call him ugly? Uh, well, the ugly man let me follow him to the city. Has the ugly man a city? <laughs> yeah, that ain't gonna happen. Uh, I can use the company if Zuni will follow ugly man orders. <laughs> the ugly man is sorry, but he reached his quota of crazy. <laughs> oh boy, you know, I guess even this crazy man might be, might be valuable in a combat situation. More ugly men! No, I mean me. <laughs> Zuni cannot stand much more ugliness. I have a faint heart. Man. Uh, uh, he rises from the crouching position, collects his things. All right, so we've got a new henchman. If you if you press the icon there, gleaming in the top bottom left, ah, you see your current part. Party management. Yeah, so we got some ugly men. One, where's my? Okay, yeah, I see. We got our three different ones there. Nicely laid out. I see why you had three now, because I don't think you could fit a fourth one over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he doesn't have anything, man. What is this? Yes, right sir. click spreads love. Love. This character works differently from uh, from the rest of them. Basically, he cannot uh, carry any item in, in his backpack. Basically, because he doesn't want. Oh. And uh, he's covered in tattoo, which works like spells. Different spells than the rest. That is pretty cool. So he's got a love tattoo. Uh, shifts out of here. And now... Makes him invisible yeah. and vulnerable. Summons a wall of pure force. So he's seems like a pretty valuable uh, addition to the party. It depends if you keep him alive, but his uh, his biggest uh, um, uh, value probably outside of the the stories that he can uh, I mean mechanically is that he can uh, open and close uh, other. In particular paths in the in the game story. Oh. Well, we found an oasis. And of course, there is the old woman with <laughs> the grim face between Citroni and the pool. <laughs> nice place for an oasis, isn't it? Best there is, seeing Twatter. Seeing Twatter is here. Yeah, about the water. Uh, she points the clerk's eyes to the wooden pole ending in a glass blade that's sitting in her lap. Cannot drink you, no, no. Citrani imagines that however impaired its wielder, that weapon looks vicious. He's not feeling particularly skillful at dodging currently. I'm not entirely convinced that blade is for more than show. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> uh, before the clerk can take one more breath, the woman, still sitting, rotates the blade effortlessly in her hand. Lunges for Citrani's torso and unexpectedly turns at the very last moment, piercing a bit of skin on his arm instead of his whole heart. He's convinced now. <laughs> He's not so eager to <laughs> test the woman's skill. <laughs> oh, come on. Surely we can get some water here. This is mine. Big reward. Calls Kaka, great chief. This is everything you know. The woman pauses, grabs a handful of sand, raises it above her head. Let's it fall slowly onto her hair. Uh, Citrani's thirsty and puzzled. Maybe it's not the best time to stand on ceremony. <laughs> so I can try to remove the staff. <laughs> nah, no, better leave while intact. Yeah, okay, try. <laughs> Whoa. 
Whoa, what's going on? Clerk exasperated closes in on the woman. He has not the time to consider how to handle her. As she's standing already and staff in hand, she seems to concentrate on her surroundings. Fight for life. Here we go. Your new companion, Zuni32, is a different kind of magic user. He is an Auron spellcaster. Not requiring reagents or activators, his powers come from within. Okay, interesting. He can still get mana burn, but his mana saturation dissipates faster over time. To cast spells with Zuni, simply click on his tattoos with the right mouse button. Okay, where's his tattoos? There. I would go from there! <laughs> uh, do we need to... Okay. okay. I, I should also... I, I, I would uh, uh, disable the, the menu at now. Yeah. Which one of these is an attack? What? What? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Oh, I think it thinks I'm still fighting a rat. Oh god! She's gonna. Oh, she done killed him. Jeez, Louise. I can't even. I'm not. I'm not doing any damage to her. Yeah, very little. But I would move from there. Is there a place to move? Oh, there's a rat too. <laughs> oh, no. oh man, I don't think. I think this is. This ain't looking good. I've, no. Ah. <laughs> but this is very good because now you can you can uh, reload and. Yeah, very good. Uh. <laughs> you die. Sorry. You... I got you there. I'm sorry, <laughs> my fault. Okay, well, let's take a look at this last file here. Okay, so let's take a look here at before skirmish. So about how f far into the game is this? This is a uh, middle in the game, uh, and uh, you have. Uh, uh, no, um, no uh, other um, character in the party. Oh no, I'm all alone. I do have a sand breather hat though. Rebreather mask. What is this toilet paper? Roll of bandages. <laughs> Looks like toilet paper. <laughs> That's toilet paper. Come on. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Oh well. What is this? Uh, I would not advise that. <laughs> okay, now you tell me. <laughs> Sheltered by the low slopes nearby, a pit, or rather a dangerous sinkhole, survives the continuous attack of the sand. A number of weathered stakes grow around it like fangs, and ruined ropes are tied to them. <clears throat> Strani looks at the dark mouth, wondering when he's startled by a voice booming out of it. <laughs> I'm kind of thirsty, you know. I said, I'm kind of thirsty. The voice really seems to be coming out of the gaping hole. Well, so, so we got this giant pit with spikes around it out in the desert somewhere. There's a voice booming out of it that keeps saying he's thirsty. Yes. Why do I not like the situation? <laughs> Why do I get the feeling I'm about to die again? <laughs> no, uh. It's not a short. Maybe you don't. Uh, let's you see. have to keep hope. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll play it out. See, well, me, I'm not drinkable. That seemed like a pretty good thing to say. You don't expect I'm going to water you, right? You know, I'm getting this weird image in my head of, like, peeing into the, <laughs> into the pit. <laughs> Why Ooh. didn't I... We didn't, did, did you have thought about that? <laughs> yeah, think about urinating in it. <laughs> I see a giant hole in the ground. That's my first thought. Uh, let's see. Uh, who are you? What are you? Uh, there's a pause. Uh, when the voice speaks again, it sounds surprised. Me? Oh, right. A name. I don't use one myself. I guess. Okay, you can call me Courtney. Uh, okay. <laughs> Who are you, sweetie? <laughs> what in God's name is going on here? Uh, well, I'm Citrani. Uh, an undrinkable, inedible clerk of the <laughs> town. How's life? <laughs> I think I'll start introducing myself like that from now on. Yes, it's Matt. It's, it's the undrinkable and edible Matt Barton here to see you. Uh, well, apart from a bad toothache, the lack of a dentist, the whole dying of thirst thing, and the damn tourists throwing money in my mouth, life is good. Say, how much water do you carry again? <laughs> Tourists? What's a tourist? Money? As an amateur dentist, I can operate on you for free. <laughs> you know, this is getting pretty wacky. 
Ah, both gullible and greedy. You're my kind of man. No, I'm all right. I just need some water. Suppose you can't spare any of yours? I gave you some nice stones I found down here that I've never seen before. Interested. Well, these could be rocks, but maybe she's found some kind of gemstones, right? <clears throat> I can't say no to your charming ways. I'll lower down a water skin. Exchange is quickly done, as the ways of the desert require. One rope descends into the dark with a water skin tied to it. Another one is pulled up out of the mouth with a bundle of cloth. Clerk opens it to reveal a bunch of stones. One of them looks peculiar, cold to the touch. There's also some grinded saltpeter. Satrini has seen minerals like these used by scholars in Pentala. The others are ordinary stones. Nothing more to it. The voice in the pit goes silent. There's only so much trust strangers can put in each other out here. He nods to the mouth <laughs> and then departs. That turned out okay. Yeah, th this could could have turned in a, in a lot of other different ways. <clears throat> there is also uh, there is a way to go down the the pit. There is a, there are you can meet somebody if you have the the correct item uh, yeah. in your backpack. Go down and make out with Courtney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't Light know. Yes, I guess when people hear about this game and they hear post-apocalyptic role-playing game, they they probably start thinking about, well, is it like is it like Wasteland? Is it like Fallout? Uh, to me, it doesn't feel anything like those games. I mean, was that... I mean, yes, it's got a post-apocalyptic setting, but it's it feels really different to me. Uh, what are your thoughts? If, if, if you like me too, I can, I can uh, give you some... Mm, oh, what's what's the word? Uh, tell you something that goes on go, that's going on with the narrative behind the curtain. Yeah, sure, but, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, one of the there is there is as you said uh, as, as you noted uh, uh, a bit of humor. I'm not sure that it's good humor or, or anything, but there is that on a surface. But there is also <laughs> a, a serious theme uh, underneath it, which is um about uh, uh how humanity cope with uh, with the new with the new mm, uh, social setting how do you keep uh, yourself and uh, the people uh, around you safe uh, and uh, do you trust different people do you uh, put a wall between you and them uh, and something like that that and uh, this is true in general But it's also more true for Cetrani as the story goes on because he takes some very polarizing choices even if uh, the tone is very lightly about it and they um, Define the end of the game among, between the three of them that there are What in the hell have I gotten into here? The harsh master. Filing on cheese's cruel blades, piercing the mist, hurting on the sands. On second thought, the idea of being silently assaulted in the night, and unexpectedly being killed. A large sand crawler's mouth. Jump, jump. Yeah, this I think you really nailed it in the description of that of this game on Steam because I mean just to me if coming at it from if you're used to something like Fallout or <laughs> A Adam or Atom, Adam, A T O M, mm -hmm. or the Wasteland game. This this really to me does feel more like one of those uh, sort of choose your own adventures. Oh, I died again, and I don't think that's a bad thing at all. You know, it's it's a nice bit of variety. If you do, if you really want to delve into like a, a lot of imaginative scenarios, uh, I think I mean the humor to me works pretty well. Oh, yeah, you know, that, I, I like that. Nice. I was uh, chuckling, especially the first time I played it. <laughs> yeah, uh, but really, it gets it, it gets more it gets uh, more difficult as you go on to cope with. Uh, I mean, with does it, it get but... increasingly grim, or do you keep the humor throughout? Yeah. Uh, the fool knows after he's suffered. Hesiod. Oh, I like the quotes. I do this too. <laughs> All right, Mark. I think that's a pretty good overview of the game. Uh, you have any? Other thoughts you want to share with us before we call it a day here? Uh, maybe I, I, um, 
if you like only only if you like uh, you can reload the the the, um, the one that that uh, you went to just sorry I, I, for, I forget uh, b before uh, uh, skirmish and actually go to the skirmish uh, to the left root left up left up 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 that, that one yes nope 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 right. here at your at your 10 o'clock 10 o'clock that's that's 12 left go left your left <laughs> Nope. Okay, that one stopped there. <laughs> this one? Yes, that one. I had to think about 10 o'clock. Uh, this situation can go very different different uh, be, uh, um, depending on how many characters <coughs> and what characters you have in the party. There, basically, there is basically a um, skirmish between the two nomads group, group and you can choose whether to intervene or not. For the purpose of showing this, maybe... I would go with not, and then let you choose your own. <laughs> As you've answers. gone with the evil gleam in your eyes. No, 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 I don't. I don't. It's worried the muffled sounds of strife just beyond it. Now he sees it. A clash of two nomad groups, each of no more than a dozen raiders, but with warlocks on both sides. Pack lizards have been fallen by vicious wounds, darkened with burns. The marauders... Use them as protection against the raging sandstorm that has been conjured by the men in tatters and ritual masks at the back of their own groups. It's best to evade the whole thing and hide until they have finished to massacre each other. Or maybe to help one of the groups defeat the other and pick up some spoils. So my options are either to hide and see how it plays out or to get involved. I would choose the first one. But okay. then I would leave you to, to, to make your own choice. Okay, so we'll see how it plays out. 20 marauders and a couple of warlocks. I may be greedy, but I'm not crazy. Shotty crouches down below the low sandy crest, shrugs in its direction into that of the raging storm, and bunks himself in the sand, preparing to wait. Sounds of battle rage on. That looks pretty intense, too. Uh, at some point, one of the sides is prevailing over the other. The sound of sand blowing subsides, and only the moans of the wounded and the cries of the dying remain. Wait just a bit more. After another half hour, there's nothing to be heard at all. As Trotty risks a look over the ledge, the victors have rounded up the remaining pack beasts, saddled with the spoils, and departed. So check the corpses for plunder or leave. Well, obviously, <laughs> check the corpses for plunder. Hello. As the Johnny slides down the sandy slope towards the battle site, tumbling on the last part. He gets up, brushing away the dust, while his eyes scan the carnage, looking for something of use. You know, I'm not looking like <laughs> I don't like the looks of these uh these dune worms. Uh, <clears throat> see, in the middle of it, having encountered a dozen bodies, he sees a corpse being sucked underground, slowly disappearing <laughs> in a cloud of sand. <laughs> oh, nothing to be concerned about. Sand leechers are on the prowl. Run. Kill the suckers. Kill the suckers. I... No! <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Where are these sand suckers? Is that one over there? Come on. Oh, these things are fast. Oh, look. Oh, oh. What is this? What am, kind of weapon do I have here? Uh, you have uh, the harm that you have uh, taken from uh, Kalka. There, I got one. It ain't so tough. I should probably line up my healing. Yeah. Let's see, what do I have to heal myself with here? Uh, does that help? Nope. nope. Why is no, that? No, it's a, it's a two-handed weapon. Uh, but you can use that also from your backpack. Oh, nice. Here we go. Come here, you sand leech. Come here, where'd you go? Oh. <laughs> oh, can you do it? I'm gonna have to heal up again. Let's see, is that one gone? No. Oh. I would try to hair the dam and, uh, and move around the, the whole hair of the butt. It's Ooh, still there's a lot there. of these. <laughs> With only one character. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, they keep trying to surround me. <laughs> oh, no, come on, don't miss. There we go. Another one down. Another one bites the dust. I guess that's what these guys do, though. Mm. And you are in a very bad situation now. No, I'm not. I'm an old pro at this, Marco. I, <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing. I know, but you, you had to trust some very bad game designer to have done it correctly. <laughs> No, I'm crushing these little sand leeches. They look like he's smiling at me. Like, you make you think, oh, a cute little sandworm. He's like, oh, is that a bandage? Yes. Grab that. Grab that. Uh, you can. You can. Ah! Make... Oh, I, I was about to say <laughs> that you can pause the game at any moment uh, when if you enter the, your part inventory, so you can uh, use that time to uh, recover some healing. I was going to grab that toilet paper. It was a really there's a lesson, there's a lesson to be learned here, folks. There's a very important life lesson. <laughs> Death may be the greatest of all human blessings. And that is the lesson, folks. Death may be the greatest of all human blessings. <laughs> Socrates. Uh. All right, Marco. Anyway, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, people, if you want to play this game, and I think you should, uh, you can pick it up on Steam. Uh, how much is it on Steam? Do you happen to... No, uh, 1999, I think. Uh, so 1999, well worth it. Uh, do you have it available anywhere else? Is it on GOG? Uh, no, GOG, uh, it's out of our, our hands because uh, it's basically it depends on how many people request it. But uh, we will maybe have some uh, new regarding uh, news regarding uh, wherever you can find the game uh, soon. Can Cannot I get it directly be... from your website? Do you have a no, we are not equipped to, to, to do that. Okay, so it's pretty much Steam. <laughs> it's the place to get the... Okay, we've got um, some options in the future, in the near future. Well, there you go, folks. Aeon of Sands, The Trill. Really fun game if you like the classic, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, early 90s style. Somewhere in there, maybe late, somewhere in late 80s. I don't know, what would you say, early 90s, late 80s? Um, okay, I'm leaning more about, uh, <laughs> uh, to, to to late eighties. Late eighties, yeah, because it's yeah, it's it's to me it's kind of like Dungeon Master, or maybe Eye of the Beholder, something like that meets uh, maybe Fallout or Wasteland. It's it's for some reason I keep thinking of Beneath the Still Sky too. You know some of those old uh, graphical nice adventure comparison. games. Yeah, it's it's. It sort of has that vibe. It's not necessarily the same setting or anything, but it sort of feels like that. All right, so there you have it, folks. Uh, Aeon of Sands, The Trail. Really, really fun game. Uh, if you like the uh, late 80s graphical adventure games with a little bit of role-playing, dungeon crawling, uh, post-apocalyptic setting, I think you'll uh, really enjoy this. We were saying earlier, it kind of reminds me, just in terms of uh, the feel of it, sort of the style of it, I guess, to something like some of those old adventure games like uh, Beneath a Still Sky uh, kind of springs that's a, to mind. But. That's a very nice comparison. <clears throat> I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'll let you have the final uh, thoughts here, Marco. What do you What do you think? No, I, I'm very happy for... Uh, I, I enjoyed the, to, to see you playing this, uh, the, our games, uh, our game and uh, it was fun to, to see you stumble a bit around <laughs> yeah I got and, killed uh, you enjoyed watching me die <laughs> no I'm not so, I'm not so mean, but it was okay yes <laughs> but I did kill some rats don't forget about that thing. absolutely yeah <laughs> you, you, you should mount their head in uh, in uh, I, 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 I will tell you I, I will do a, a, a small graphic for, for that with uh, the rats mounted on the on uh, uh, on, a, on a small room in the underwood so for you <laughs> excellent so folks if you want to play this game uh, the best way right now is to go to steam yes. so 1999 on there i just checked that uh, again so you can add this to your steam library and have a lot of fun with it i think you'll uh, really really enjoy this so uh, thanks again marco for showing taking some time to uh, go through the game thanks with us you. Uh, keeping an eye on you, see what you come out with next. 
Thank you very much. It's, it's, it has been a pleasure, Matt. Uh, likewise. Ciao. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I know it's been a while. It seemed like the distance between the videos or the, the time between videos is getting longer and longer. You know, what can I say? I'm trying my best uh, to stay on top of this, but uh, the semester has started. At least the first few weeks I'm making videos uh, for those courses. I've got some online courses, actually. I wish you guys, if you're interested in those courses, I've got some... Uh, uh, professional writing courses and a, uh, some business communication courses. <laughs> so if you have any interest in that, uh, let me know. I could post a link to those uh, educational videos. But uh, otherwise, I just let you know it might be a while. Uh, a little personal news to the uh, uh, Dungeons and Desktops 2.0. We just got the first round of proofs for those. So we're in the proofreading stages. Me and Shane, uh, Shane plays. Shane stacks. So we'll be taking a look at those. Uh, so there might be a little bit of a delay, but don't worry. There will be more match chat to come, so just stay tuned. Uh, as always, I want to thank you, 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 thank you with the double helping of, uh, actually a triple helping of thank yous. I mean, this is a <laughs> really high plate of thanks. <laughs> uh, just sheer gratitude, raw gratitude for all the support, uh, all the great stuff you folks are doing for the show. I really appreciate those Patreons, the Patrons. Uh, over at Patreon, uh... You know, if you want to support the show that way, uh, just go to that link in the show notes to Patreon. Uh, there have been some concerns lately. Uh, Patreon, a lot like uh, YouTube, and uh, there's, it's kind of irksome to some people. They're clamping down on uh, free speech, basically. Uh, you know, I don't know too much. I'm not a very politic political guy by any means. I just got some uh, emails from some folks that are concerned about these, and they're looking for... They're basically saying, look, I want to support Matt Chat, but I don't want to support... Uh, Patreon or something like that. Uh, so don't forget, you can if you if you have any issues whatsoever, you can go to uh, matchat.us and uh, there's a PayPal link there. Uh, otherwise, I mean, there's some trouble with PayPal too in those regards. So you know, it's kind of getting to the point now. I don't know what to do. Uh, if you really, uh, you know, I might have to start looking into some options. I'd like to hear from the folks that are concerned about those. If you know a better option, uh, I know there's some stuff in the works, but. Uh, you know, what can I say? Again, I'm not a very politically savvy dude. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, if you've got ideas, better ways to fund the show, just let me know. I'm uh, willing to be educated on that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, what about that news from the Matt Cave? Uh, first up is some uh, good old Stig wrote in uh, with this little uh, news item. I don't know exactly what to call this, but apparently BioWare uh, back in the day was set up to make a new Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. You know, that's, I, I love that original uh, title. Uh, the second one's okay too, but then you know, then like the Star Wars games got kind of uh, it's kind of downhill from there. There never was an experience quite as good as that first uh, Kotor. Well, apparently EA. Uh, wouldn't let Bioware do it. It wasn't that Bioware didn't want to. Is that EA wouldn't let them do it. Uh, so they got some quotes there. Apparently this is coming from some tweets from Jason Schreier, who said, uh, yeah, they tried to make it happen, but more than once, but there was no luck. <laughs> so, so a little buzz about this. You know, a lot of people are upset. You know, as if you needed another reason to hate Electronic Arts. <laughs> you know, they kept you from getting that uh, true sequel to Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, and then I got a bunch of stuff here from Gotrick. Uh, the first one is really super cool. I want to spend some time. I want to dial it in on this a little bit. This is Obsidian's new RPG, The Outer Worlds. And yes, uh, Tim Kane and Leonard Bjarski are part of the team on this. Uh, Polygon's calling it a cross between Fallout and Mass, Mass Effect, but without the romance. <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of like the romance in uh, uh, Mass Effect anyway. Uh, but apparently this will not have it. Well, let's see. You were on a... Uh, so there's some... Let's see how this... Players are on these uh, massive starships, freshly thawed after a much longer than expected journey. They're kind of on these uh, seed ships or colony ships. Uh, you're on the second colony ship. It got knocked out of its FTL travel somehow, so it got... Uh, <laughs> it took longer to get there than it should, about 70 years. 
this is kind of a I don't know what to call that. A, I'm trying to think of that show that's uh, set up that way with the uh, the, the colony ships. <laughs> I'm kind of blanking on it right now. Uh, but anyway, uh, in the fiction of the outer worlds, humans can't survive hibernating for more than a decade. Uh, somehow, though, you've been kept alive, and your quest is to help the colony find the resources they need, or the sh colony ship, rather, uh, to find the resources they need to unfreeze the remaining settlers. And Bjarsky calls it, a, he says, uh, I liken it more to an evolution from the things you saw in Fallout New Vegas, where the characters are much more integrated. I don't necessarily want to make comparisons between the two, but they're both from the same DNA. <laughs> Let's put it that way. That's good old Leonard Bjarsky. You know, it'd be great to have uh, Tim Kane and Leonard Bjarsky back on. You know, I interviewed them not too long ago. Uh, Kane dropped in, made that awesome uh, guest appearance. But anyway, that sounds uh, really, really cool. And uh, he also, uh, Gotrek also wrote in about the new uh, uh, Marvel Alliance game. Uh, coming out soon. He's a big fan of that series. Uh, I've got to admit, I haven't really spent much time with uh, Marvel Alliance, so I'd love to know what you guys uh, think about that. And also, the little game I've been enjoying, it's called uh, My Life in Porsche. This is from Team 17. And uh, if you like Stardew Valley, uh, but you wanted something in 3D, <laughs> this game might scratch that itch. But, uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's not perfect by any means, but I've been having some uh, some fun with this. Uh, my life in Porsche. I might actually do a uh, gameplay video uh, on this, maybe for the next episode. I mean, if you're going to be spending this much time with the game, why not? Uh, anyway, I think that will do it for the news. All right, so let's wrap this up with a quote. And I mentioned in the uh, my talk with the Mar Marco uh, the novel A Canticle for Leibowitz, and that is by um, let's see Walter M. Miller Jr. Anyway, I highly recommend the book. You know, it doesn't seem to get a lot of uh, Pretty sure Kane or uh, Biarski mentioned it a few times uh, in my interviews with them. But anyway, I finally got around to reading it about a year or two ago, and I thought it was wonderful. I don't know why it doesn't get more uh, recognition. Uh, but anyway, I thought uh, I would read a quote from it. It's a fairly lengthy quote, uh, but I think this gives you a pretty good taste uh, for what that novel is like. So uh, anyway, it goes something like this. The closer men came to perfecting for themselves a paradise, the more impatient they became with it and with themselves as well. They made a garden of pleasure and became progressively more miserable with it as it grew in richness and power and beauty. For then, perhaps, it was easier to see something was missing in the garden, some tree or shrub that would not grow. When the world was in darkness and wretchedness, it could believe in perfection and yearn for it. But when the world became bright with reason and riches, it began to sense the narrowness of the needle's eye and that rankled for a world no longer willing to believe or yearn. So ponder on that, and see you guys next time. Use it well, my friend. Don't lose your head. <laughs>